Stella's Happily Ever After. A long time ago, in a village in a European kingdom, lived a girl named Stella. She lived with her stepmother, Diana, and stepsister, Jennifer. After her father's death, Stella's stepmother used to treat her like a servant. Her meals consisted of stale leftovers, and she wore only her stepsister's second-hand clothes. One day, there was an announcement made in the kingdom. The prince was looking for a bride to marry. For that purpose, the king was organizing a grand ball. All the young maidens were invited to come to the palace and attend the ball. Stella's stepmother, Diana, and her stepsister, Jennifer, were excited to hear this news. Darling Jennifer, now it's time for you to lose weight. If you want to get married to the prince, your looks must be your top priority. Now, where is this wretched girl? Make haste, Stella. Yes, mother, coming. It is your job to serve Jennifer food now. First, get the quantity approved by me, then serve it. Understood? You have to take good care of her. You get it in your head or not? Yes, mother. Got it. I have to ensure that Jennifer looks her best for the prince's ball. Stella, go fetch our shoes. We have to step out to make purchases. Stella quickly goes and fetches their shoes. The two set off on their shopping excursion. Stella wishes she could go to the ball as well. Mother, can I please accompany you to the ball as well? I promise I will be inconspicuous and stand right behind everyone. Not at all. Never in a thousand years. We're not taking you with us. Don't let that thought even enter your head. Do you understand? I'm getting too big for our boots, are we? Mother and daughter set off to buy costumes and other items to prepare for Prince Robert's ball. Poor Stella quietly goes inside and feels dejected. She sits by the window and starts sobbing. Her teardrops fall on a lily flower in a pot near the window. A pretty fairy appears in front of her. What's the matter, my child? Why are you so sad? Who are you? Who? My name is Lily. I'm a flower fairy. Come now, tell me. Why are you crying? Stella narrates her woes to Lily. There's only one week left for the prince's ball. My sister Jennifer is attending the ball but I've been denied permission to do so. Stella, my child, don't you worry. I will help you get ready for the ball. But my fairy godmother, I don't even have decent clothes to wear. When people see me dressed up like this, they will laugh at my appearance. Stella, by God's grace, you are a beautiful girl. As for dressing up, leave that task to me. The fairy brought a new ray of hope into Stella's life. The night of the prince's ball finally arrived. Stella, we are leaving for the ball. Take care of the house. And for goodness sake, don't eat up all the food. You seem to be quite hungry lately. By the time we return, the house should be spick and span. Make sure of that. You go ahead and have a nice time. When you come back, you will find the house squeaky clean. Jennifer and Diana leave for the ball. Stella rushes towards the flower and splashes some drops of water on it. Lily appears again. Stella, you look radiant. All that hard work you do has kept you looking fit and glowing. I hope so. But what do I do about my costume and shoes? If my hair is not styled properly. Didn't I promise you that was my department? The fairy encircles her sparkling star magic wand over Stella's head. Stella has a complete makeover. Long flowing tresses, a crystal embellished gown, head turning shoes and soft silky gloves that felt like clouds to the hand. When Stella looks at herself in the mirror, she is astounded. Is this really me? I can't believe this is real. I have only changed your clothes and shoes. 
The radiance on your face has always been there. The reality is that you are an extremely beautiful girl. Fairy Godmother, thank you immensely. I hope I won't be late for the ball. Don't worry about that. I've made arrangements for that as well. Stella's transformation is complete, and now she steps out of the house. A beautiful carriage driven by white horses is waiting for her outside. She gets inside and sets off to the ball. The palace is filled with many girls who have come to attend the ball. Prince Robert is sitting on a throne, placed at the top of the stairs. Stella catches the prince's eye, and he descends down the stairs to approach her. May I have this dance with you? Of course you may. It will be my pleasure. Robert and Stella dance together. The other girls look at them with envy. The king and queen, on the other hand, are extremely pleased to see them together. In their hearts, they know that their son has found his future bride. Also watching this are Stella's stepmother and sister, who leave the palace in a fit of anger and jealousy. Stella sees them leave and begins to get uneasy. She knows that if she doesn't reach home before them, she will have a heavy price to pay. Stella hurriedly pulls away from the prince, leaving one of her gloves behind in the prince's hands. She hops onto the carriage and leaves. As soon as she reaches home, she transforms back into her old self. She quickly gets busy in cleaning the house. After a while, there's a knock on the door. Have you lost your hearing? I have knocked twice already. Forgive me, mother. Er, I was cleaning the house. Maybe, maybe that's why I didn't hear you knocking. You call this cleaning? Half the house is still dirty. Till you finish this and get the house to looking sparkling clean, you won't get dinner tonight. We are already quite hassled right now. Don't you dare say a word. Stella is secretly thrilled at their being upset, and yet... She is sad that she did not get to spend enough time with the prince. The next day, it is announced that the prince wants to meet the girl who has the other glove that can match the one that was left behind. Stella splashes some drops of water on the flowers again. When Lily appears, Stella narrates the whole story to her. Is that all? This time when you meet him, make sure he is yours forever. The fairy does her magic and transforms Stella back into her glamorous version. Stella climbs onto the carriage without realizing that her stepmother Diana and stepsister Jennifer are hiding at the back of the carriage. They reach the palace where the prince sees Stella with a glove in her hand. On realizing it is the same girl from before, he rushes to embrace her. The prince then proposes marriage to Stella. Diana and Jennifer go green with envy on hearing this. Stella's face lights up with pure joy. Lily the fairy watches the scene from the sky and smiles happily. Prince Robert and Stella get married in a grandiose ceremony. They lived happily ever after. If you enjoyed this story, please like and subscribe our channel and press the bell icon to get future updates. And don't forget to comment!